My name is John Stewart, and I own and operate Abbey Road Farm in Carleton, Oregon. Uh, on the property here, we have established our Agravino Events Center. Uh, harkening back to a couple of years ago when we first opened the center, it was designed to be a wine culture, wine education center, and so on, and we had a rather uh, widely talked about uh, problem with our friends at the OLCC, which we have now finally dispensed with in terms of carrying that forward. Uh, in any event, uh, the Agravino Center was always duly designed to be a facility that would morph of an evening into a place where you could have wine dinners, uh, potentially uh, rehearsal dinners for weddings, uh, small wedding receptions, corporate outings, so on and so forth. So we're just now embracing that full opportunity that we had built for ourselves a few years ago. Part of the initiative, of course, was always to support the wine industry, the burgeoning wine industry in Oregon. And uh, just last evening, in fact, we had uh, the first uh, dinner of our series of dinners for 2010 featuring uh, one of the finest winemakers in, in the state of Oregon, uh, an expatriate, if you will, from the state of California, where he built a huge reputation personally and professionally for the organization he was associated with, that being Stag's Leap Winery. Uh, during Robert Britton's tenure there, he pretty much, uh, I would say, made that label into one of national and world prominence, as a matter of fact, on the Cabernet side. And he is arguably also, uh, in many quarters, the guy who is credited with being probably the world's expert on Syrahs and Petite Syrahs. That's his passion. Uh, he's translated that now to Pinot Noir, and uh, we had some of his offerings last night, and they were very widely and well received, I dare say. Now, the uh, wine, last night was the debut of the winemaker dinners, and who did the catering, and, and who are some of the other people that are uh, coming up for the series? Well, thanks for asking that in particular, because it gives me a chance to highlight some of the real talent, not only in the wine world, but in, in the surrounding community, inclusive of what we, uh, we believe is a, a true artistic representation. That is to say, Art of Catering was the caterer, and they did a brilliant job. The food, Eric, I think you'd agree with me, was pretty spectacular, and of all things, hot when served. Very professionally done. It's a real, real treat to have Larry Grimes's company, which has oft times been voted the best in Portland, uh, inaugurate our series with us. Uh, we also featured, of course, the artistry of our, our, our winemaker, Robert Britton. Uh, he was joined uh, last evening by his very talented and lovely wife, Ellen Britton, and his very accomplished daughter, who is, in fact, a certified degree uh, viticulturist. Her name is Chelsea. She works uh, also at the Willamette Valley Vineyards as, as well. Uh, and we featured, uh, in combination with that tandem, uh, the artwork of Mr. Terry Peasley, a celebrated watercolorist here locally, who has, to his credit, among other things, about a dozen wine labels for a, a variety of uh, vineyards. Uh, and, of course, we also uh, had here with us uh, the works and the craftsmanship of our own Skip Berkery here, who has Skip's Woodshed crea Creations, pardon me, right on property. Mm -hmm. And daily you can see Skip making... Uh, art, articles uh, of furniture and so on and so forth out of retired wine barrels, uh, which thematically works with our whole concept of recovery of agricultural uh, resources such as our silo suites. And, and actually the Agravino Center itself was at one point a horse barn that has been converted. Mm -hmm. and, but, uh, so you've get, but you continue with the B&B &B and you continue with, uh, with the uh, artisan cheese that you have here. That too, you bet. That's Judy's hobby, as you may recall. When we first got here, we thought at one point to develop a huge goat dairy. Uh, came to our senses, dare I say, and uh, decided not to do that, but we maintain a farmstead dairy program here with her goats and our uh, on-property goat cheese. So now, it's, I mean, everything can change, but uh, is Joe Dobbs next up for the series? Yeah, Joe is slated to be here on May 8th, and I think at that time, uh, if recollection serves, we're going to have the catering uh, artistry of Catering by Bo. You may know that mm -hmm. they own the Typhoon restaurants in Portland area, and I believe there's one in Seattle mm -hmm. as well. They also have a very, very fine catering company, Catering by Bo. Mm -hmm. So Joe will be here, and I believe Joe is going to feature not only his own wines, but several of the other entities for whom he is the winemaker. Uh, and I think you may know better than I, Eric, it's a daily count, but I think he makes wine for about a dozen other labels. Right. Um, it seems like every time I come back here, there's always something new. It's the, is it bocce ball? Is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> bocce ball, right. We have bocce ball here. We have croquet. We have uh, horseshoes and so on and so forth. And we try to feature something new. When I was uh, living in Las Vegas for the better part of 30 years, I had a about a 10-year run of association with one of the finer hotel casinos there. And 
it came to understand as being on that board of directors for about a, a dozen years that uh, uh, you need to constantly invest and change things and keep things fresh and new, not only maintaining what you have, but uh, facilitating new ideas uh, for people to come back time and time again. And there again, we're very flattered to uh, have built a business here where we have recidivists and we have people that come again every every other year or every few months and oftentimes they bring friends with them and that's that's very flattering indeed.